Okay, guys, I downloaded the zip file, did all the other preparatory stuff to get this Tubemoji HP to work. I can do a right click on it if I want, and I can send it to the desktop. Okay, creating a shortcut to the desktop, right? You know it's a shortcut because it has a little arrow on the folder. That's how I know it's not a copy of the whole thing sitting on the desktop. This arrow means go somewhere else when I click this thing. It means go to where it is, which happens to be the C drive, right? Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get the HP requirements first. We need that. So we need to install the Moji Toolbar V17, the Moji Pro version 3.0, that guy, that guy, that guy, and that guy. By the way, this you only need to install for WinZip uh, 17, right? That's the WinZip 17. That's um, if you need to. If you already have a valid license of WinZip that's better than 12.1, uh, you don't need to do this because it will it might put you back in evaluation mode, and then this will not work, and we need this to work. This is a WinZip command line function that allows auto zipping from a batch file so that our automation zips our stuff up for us to upload to our website really fast and that's very cool so it needs to work um, and so as long as you have WinZip 12.1 or better it, then this thing will work and your computer can zip stuff up automatically for you you don't have to do it manually all right so let's go ahead and start here's what you do first see the Moji toolbar v17 folder right click it hit cut because you don't need it here. Go into your C drive, and either you're going to paste it in Program Files x86, if you have it, if you're on a 64-bit computer, or you're going to put it in your Program Files for 32-bit. You guys on XP or you guys who have 32-bit computers anyway, and you're running 32-bit version. If you do have Program Files x86, it's probably the best place to put it anyway. All right, there we go. So I'm just going to paste it in there. Boom. All right. There. So it's there in my program files x86 folder. Now, I'm not done yet. I still have to do a couple more things to make it work. It's an add-on for Excel, and this is the one we need, Moji Toolbar 17. So we need to attach it to Excel and give it permissions to run. It doesn't go on to any servers and check anything or authenticate anything. It just runs natively on your computers. Here we go. Excel, let's go ahead and open Excel 2010. Okay, if you got 2007, this will work too, uh, at least for our purposes. But 2010 is the best, you know. All right, I do not see Emoji Toolbar up here. That's my point, and I need to see one up here. So I'm going to hit File. I'm going to hit Options. I've got Add-ins and Trust Center. Let me go to the Trust Center first because I need to deal with that. So, uh, permissions. I'm going to hit Trust Center Settings. Okay. And I'm going to go to macro settings because the Moji toolbar is all about macros. It needs macros. It's all about macros. And there are macros on your computer. Again, don't worry about them. But we are going to set macro settings all the way down. Enable all macros. Okay, it's going to say not recommended. Potentially dangerous code can run. That's been there since the start of time. And in the old days, people used to try to get you to download macros that were dangerous, whatever. That's... You know, unless you go really far out there on the net and do some really weird stuff, download some really weird stuff, uh, you're probably never going to have a problem there. Your antivirus should be protecting you just fine anyway. Um, and our stuff is perfectly safe. All our guys do this. They enable, enable all the macros, right? And the other thing, check this box. Trust access to the VBA project object model. Okay? Check it. So this goes all the way down. That gets check marked. Okay? Now we can hit OK. Now what do we do? We go one step up to add-ins. Okay, when we go to add-ins, okay, we get a window like this with a button like that down here. We're gonna hit go, and we need to attach Moji Toolbar V17. I got an old 16 sitting in here. It's the 17.6, but we still call it the 17. Okay, so hit browse and hit C drive. Program Files x86, in my case, or Program Files, wherever it was you put it. Program Files x86 is preferred if you have it. All right, and then down here, right where it says Moji Toolbar V17, click on it and hit it. And then hit OK, because it makes sure it's check marked, but it will be by default. Hit OK. And it should appear up here. Now, I'm not going to look at it yet. I'm just going to close Excel because I want to lock it in. I don't just want this to be only for the sheet right here. 
uh, this workbook right here. I want it to be for all of Excel, so I'm going to close out now that I attached it and reopen it. Okay, that way I could verify it's stuck, right? That it stayed there, and it did. So you can hit it. It's got these, you see, these are all macros. That's why we had to enable them. They all do really important stuff, and this is cool. Yours might look a little different than this, but that's okay. All right, and if it looks different, it's just the way it fits your ribbon in across the screen and things like that. So don't worry about it. If you got a smaller screen, you might see a produce output button with a drop down. If you hit it, then you see these appear. Okay, that's what I mean by it might look a little different. Other than that, you're good to go. So we can close this now. That much is done. We did that. So what else do we do? We do the next part. Let's do that. So we get our HP requirements and we're going to do the next part. Mochi Pro version 3.0. We're all set up for it. Here's what you do. Moji Pro, uh, Professional Installer .exe. By the way, this is interesting reading for later. That's for you guys who like to look through change logs. What, what we did with all of our versions as we were developing it. So it goes way back in time and makes lots of interesting notes. And then there's sequential steps for Moji runs. This is for custom Moji runs. Back before we had cut and dried generic projects like the UAP that you could use to get started. Okay, so these are actually like steps for doing this with your own web page, any web page on the internet you want to start with. I don't care if it's a WordPress web page. It's going to create HTML pages, but they'll look like your original web page and act like your original web page. And you can make whole Moji runs in minutes when you know how. And these go along with a video that teaches about all this stuff. Okay, this is more advanced. This is, you know, further along. All right, so whatever, that's for later. All right, in the meantime, we just hit this guy, the installer.exe. Okay, we get a window like this, Moji Professional 3.0 in this case, and hit next. Now we got to enter our email and enter the product key. And I happen to have that information right here. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to enter the email and then enter the product key I got, whatever product key. Okay, and hit next. And by the way, if you're on a rental program using the trial or anything like that, yes, you have to keep reinstalling this one little piece here. I'm going to hit install. And it only needs that information. Um, every time I up, every time I get an upgrade and I got to install the upgrade or whatever, you just always install it. But again, this is fast. It's really fast. And yes, you could do it again, especially for those of you guys who like uh, reformatted your, your drive and you just need to catch this up. This is the only part you have to do. All right, the rest of it will stick, like the toolbar will stick and everything else. But, yeah, you can do it. It's no problem at all. And it's just this fast, you know. And so don't get rid of this folder because you want this right here. By the way, do not move the .exe out. Don't hit cut. We had people do this before and paste it on their desktop so that they could hit it. Um, because it has to have the DLL file with it. If you do that, you need to cut the DLL file and put it here too, or it's not going to work. These two must be in the same folder for it to work. Okay? Otherwise, it won't install. All right, that just cuts off another case where probably 40 of you at one time, well, 40 of you, 40 folks who preceded you uh, have done that at one time or another, shot me support emails, and I had to dig and figure out why it didn't install, and it turned out to be that simple. Okay, so anyway, that much is done. So let's go back. Um, and let's install this. That's simple. It's just click button, install, hit next, say yes, I accept, hit next, you know, that kind of thing. Let it go where it wants to go, hit next, you know. Let that happen, hit next. Let that happen. Let that happen, hit next. And then just run it, you know. Um, you'll get it. But in my case, I'm not going to install because I already have it installed. Okay, now search and replace.zip. Yeah, it's a zip file. Right click, WinZip, extract to here. Okay, now we got something called search and replace. You're going to wind up using this from time to time. It's awesome. So go inside of it and just send a shortcut to this guy right here, search and replace.exe. Send a shortcut to your desktop. Just send to desktop. Okay, that's this guy. So you can drag it into your lower toolbar like I already did. You already see it down here. Okay. And that way it's always there. You can reach it easily no matter what. And since I already have it installed and all that, I, I don't need to do another shortcut. All right. 
This is the WinZip 17.0. It looks like a zip file, but obviously it's not. It's a .exe. So that's just their icon, you know, for their inst installation program. Um, and again, you can install that if you're considering buying it. And then install this. This is a really simple thing to install setup. Keep in mind about something with this one here. Um, it's going to tell you where it's going to put it. See, program files, x86, WinZip folder in this case because it did find a compatible version of WinZip in here. It's going to look in there for it. And if it can find it, then it's, going to, then it's going to ask, do you want us to install this thing in the same place? And the answer would be yes. Okay. And I, I don't need to install it again. But what's the point? The point is, if it cannot find what it's looking for, or if the path is going to be different, it'll install to a different path. And you may have to actually find out where it installed so that we can update something. And so wzzip.exe, right? And if you see the program up here, you can right click and hit, uh, where is it? It's open file location. That way when it does that, you see it, but you also see where it is. In my case, it's C drive program files x86 WinZip, right? I have to be careful of that then um, because, here's why, because, because, because. Inside all of these projects, okay, all of these projects, HB, Geo, HB, Geo, Sub, no Geo, no Geo, Sub, inside all of them, okay, uh, if I go into the system folder, there's a system folder inside every one of these, and if you're on 32-bit, that's what the 32-bit version is for, same thing with this, this is 64-bit version, this is 32-bit version of that, okay, this is the 32-bit version of that, I'm on 64-bit, so I'll just go in, and if I click any one of these and I hit system, okay, then I can find finish-zips.bat. If I right click and edit it, okay, then it's going to tell me where it thinks it's installed. This is what it's been using for this program. All right, don't worry about the one down here necessarily because it's turned off actually. That means comment it out. That's what these slashes mean. You don't need to worry about any of that. Just understand this. It thinks the program is here. So either I have a version that is there, or I need to change this path to wherever it is for real, right? I need to make sure that it can run the program it's going to try to run, okay? So if I need to adjust the path or not, let's just take a look. It was saying this anyway, and I do believe I have a version there. So let me just see. I think I have one in each. That's what I'm saying. Uh, program files down to, oh, there's no WinZip. Oh, okay, no WinZip. Then I do need to make that adjustment. Program files x86. That's where it is. The WinZip folder. And inside of that, WZZIP is right there. So I know it's program files x86 slash WinZip, right? So let me go ahead and update my paths. Now, what did I say about search and replace? It's cool because otherwise I have to do this manually. One, two, three, four times plus um, backup version for HB. If I wanted to get a backup. I would have to adjust it four times there. Well, that's kind of a pain. There's a better way to do it. Let me show you. Search and replace tool. Okay, this is why we got this thing. If it asks you if you want to download a new version or check for updates, say no. They actually have a version now where they say keep both. Uh, this works perfectly the way we want it to, so don't even bother to get an upgrade because it's for different functions that the guy thought to add. You know, it's all cool and stuff. It's just then you wonder which one is which all the time, which version you need. So watch this idea. I'm going to take this thing, and I'm going to go through the whole 2Moji HB folder inside of the C drive. I want that. Copy. And I'm going to paste it right here in the directory to search for files, but overwrite that C that's already there, or it's going to get doubled up. See, it's there twice. So just highlight whatever's there. So you get it right. Okay, that's the right one. Now, yes, I want to include all the subdirectories inside of here. And you may as well go all files just because this is going to be a very specific thing. So get rid of what was here already. It'll get rid of the one down below automatically. Okay, and watch. We get just one example and the rest will be the same. System, right-click, finish, zips, edit. 
right here where it was, C program files. That's all I need. I just got to adjust the path to make it real. And again, the instructions cover this with examples. There's no way you can screw this up, really. All right, C program files, space, open parenthesis, x86, close parenthesis. Don't forget about the space, right? Program files, space, x86 in parentheses. Okay, there you have it. All right, replace. And guess what it's doing? Reading through every file in there, in that, from here down, and making all the adjustments to all of them. And it did it. It did all the ones I needed, all the 32-bit, all the 64-bit, all the backups. They're all caught up to where my program is installed. Or, I'm sorry, that's where it is installed. <laughs> we replaced the old with the new. See? All right. So that's done now. So the zipping process will work fine. Okay? And that's like the last technical thing I had to do. One other technical thing, look for any .pfl file you're going to notice that you don't have the same icon on it because you need to associate it with Moji Pro first, okay? Because your computer doesn't know what to associate it with yet because there, uh, even Adobe has a PFL. There are multiple PFL programs out there. So what are we going to do? We're going to right-click any one of these .pfls, right? Anything .pfl, okay? We're going to right-click it, hit Properties, and then where it says type of files PFL opens with, yours will probably say something like common shell. And you want to open it with Moji Professional. So we're going to change that. Okay. And you probably will not see it because this is your first time install installing the software. You can check here, but you're probably not going to see it here either because your computer is not familiar with Moji Pro yet. So let's go browse to find the program we want to open .pfls with, right? That's what we're doing. So we're going to browse, go to C, not program files, program files x86 if you have it. Down to Moji, there's a folder called Moji, very simply. There it is. Click. And then Moji Professional. Click. And then Moji Pro. These are older ones that you don't have anymore, but or you don't have, but there it is, mojipro.exe. So just that, right? Now, if you have the choice to always use the selected program to open this kind of file, you can check mark it. That makes sense. Sometimes you might want to open it with Notepad, but just keep in mind that that's a different way to see it, right? You could hit Change. You could hit Notepad. Uh, but you don't need to do it this way. And if it's the first time you ever chose the program for Notepad, you should be able to edit that thing. Okay, and then after that, it kind of gets used to the options. Because let me show you why. In my case, I cannot choose, and here's why. I have done this before and used it with Notepad before. Okay, and that just means it's here. If I right click, I can open with Moji Pro or Notepad. I've already made both choices. Okay, I'm not changing the default program. This says choose the default program. I'm just saying notepad. Okay, then I can open it with that now, but otherwise it's still expecting to open itself with Moji Pro if you go the normal way to open it, which is to click it to open the interface. Then you still have to hit load. That's just a technical thing. We can't get it to auto load. You, you still have to hit load. And then just go find the one you wanted. Make sure you're in the right folder. You know, find the one you wanted. And you can open it. By the way, you're almost never going to open this thing. There's really no reason to ever open this thing. Just for all you developer types out there and you're far enough along, you know what you can do with it. But the rest of you, you don't need to open it at all. Okay. So anyway, that is actually it. So everything we did is done. Uh, all the stuff is done now. And all the updates that we had to do are done now. These are just extra things that you can read through and learn, all these additions here. Okay. Backups is just a copy of the HP and the HP32 backed up in case you accidentally need to cut one of these to overwrite. You know, if, if you did something really weird to yours, you could delete it on the spot. Just delete it, like so. And then hit Backups, Backup HB to get the replacement. Copy it. Don't just cut it because you always want a backup that's factory settings right? Just in case you have to go back to factory settings. And there you have it. It's all in there. Okay. And I can make sure it did update that finish zip stop bat file with the right path. And it did. 
So that's cool, isn't it? At least for me. All right. What now? We're actually to a point where we can run it and test it and make sure that the thing is actually working. So you can open any one of these now that works for your computer. Again, 64-bit or 32-bit. Okay. I am 64, so I open this one. And I can open any one of these if I want. I can go HB, no geo or geo. I mean, we'll talk about this later. But right now I can open, say, this no geo or geo. Let's say geo. And I can just hit the run button. And that's what I mean for all these projects. I could open this and hit the run button. They're all going to act the same uh, for my purposes right now. So all I want to do is make sure it runs all the way through, just from one end the, to the other. By the way, for those of you guys who are further along and you, you want to sell your services and people can send you the files, remember that there is a client form that's outfitted for this kind of a project here that fills everything in. So your client form, your um, client can send you, or well, you can send the client form .zip to a client, your client can fill it out, send you an email back with all the right attachments. And all of that will show them how. So it's really easy. And then what do you do? You can take those attachments and drop them into a folder and hit run. By that I mean this, watch this. If I come all the way back here, there's an incoming HP or incoming HP 32, 64-bit, 32-bit, right? And again, they all have readmes that explain what you're supposed to do with them. I could take this incoming HP, I could copy it or cut it, whatever, and I could stick it on my desktop, paste, just like that. Now, every time I check my mail and a run comes in, the guy's got like five attachments for me, CSV file, a PFL file, uh, an image, you know, and a couple other things. I'm going to open this <clears throat> and go to the right one. Geo or no geo, depending on whether his run was one with geo targeting or not. I mean, other than that, they're the same. And I take all of his attachments from his email, copy them or cut them or whatever, drag them, and paste them in here. They'll, they'll just populate. And I just hit this button. Just hit it. It'll move all those files exactly where they have to go and open this thing so I can immediately hit one run. Bam, to do his run. Okay, that's haul. <laughs> I mean, that's easy, right? So there are guys that can, you know, put out their services to others. Others say, yeah, I'll pay the however much or join your affiliate system if you do this run for me or whatever it is. Fill out your form and then they'll send you the email. And you just drag their stuff into this one incoming folder. If it's a no geo run, same thing now, drag in the no geo. Just put all their stuff inside that folder and hit that move to run. And that'll open the no geo version ready for you to hit one run right now because everything is done. The client set you, sent you all the stuff you needed. So all you have to do is hit, well, is move everything in the right place and then hit go. That's it. That's what these incomings are all about. Incoming HB, incoming HB 32. It's very, 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 very cool. At about two steps away from complete server side automation of this whole process where a guy could hit a PayPal button and it gives him a form, he fills it in, attaches a couple things, and hits submit, and it just simply does the run online, no human interaction at all. And for guys like you who own this kind of power, that means you can do runs like this all day long for yourself and your own websites. All right, this isn't the operation video yet. I'll get around to that. This is just installation, preparation, and all that kind of thing. So there you have it, really. That's about it. There's almost no troubleshooting left. Uh, everything is pretty clear as long as you're reading the readmes as you come to them just to make sure you get all your stuff right even this desktop shortcuts is all the shortcuts that you can move to your desktop and it's got a readme first it tells you what you do with it <laughs> all these readmes are awesome they cover everything so just go through all the notes that they have to make all right just make sure you get it it seems like a lot of reading but you only read these things once once you get the stuff figured out, you're not going to ever need to read these again. You can delete the ones you don't need anymore when you know it's obvious to you. Okay, read me first. It tells you exactly what to do. It's very simple. It tells you start here and you go there and it's got to read me first. It tells you exactly what you have to do to do the job, complete with all the little notes to make sure you can't trouble or can't break anything. Just make sure you do everything right. Okay, that's the end of the installation for the two Moji HB. And as you see now, what's cool about it is we put the version of the Moji Pro and the Moji Toolbar that we want with the two Mo, uh, Moji HB projects so that it will work with the Pro and the Toolbar, the Moji Pro interface and the Moji Toolbar that we're 
that this thing was outfitted around. So it will always work properly because it's the right versions of everything. So that's very cool. Okay, guys, there you have it. That's full installation of the Tumo GHB, complete with a shortcut on your desktop to open and be there, and complete with all the shortcuts you need for the versions you want right up in here, okay, like the HP folder directly. So if I were to copy this and put it on my desktop, okay, paste, then I can just go straight into the HP folder that way, boom, which and just choose the one I want and continue, right? Bam. All right, so now we're going to talk about usage. That will be the next video series for this 2 GHB. All right, hope you enjoy this setup, and you should find it really seamless to get this thing installed and running. It won't take you any longer than it took me, and that's cool. Okay.